All right, I think, I think we are live. How's our sound? Any, any good? Do we have good sound tonight? I know my face isn't on stream, but uh, I am hoping that uh, we can still have a pretty good stream here. Um, we can get a lot done on our new, our brand new Star-Lord helmet build. That sounds really good over there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miranda. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, for those of you viewers tuning in for the first time, uh, what we have here is our Star-Lord model generously provided to us uh, by the good folks over at Urban Props. That's Urban spelt H-E-R-B, <laughs> Urban Props. Uh, and this this is actually perhaps the most detailed pep helmet version of Star Lord's mask that I have seen, uh, and we have created for it some very beautiful, very beautiful templates in the right hand window there. But before we get into that little tidbit, I've had some people ask me uh, about this quite recently, and uh, the backgrounds in all of my Pepicure tutorials are pretty pretty easily changed uh but a lot of people have the standard sort of uh white background all you got to do is go to settings go to other settings go to color and then you can change both the color at the top of the window and the bottom so i'm going to change it to the colors i've been using for the rest of this build white on top orange on the bottom and that star lord's mask awesome little tips little pep tips as we go here we go. And you can see with the texture there, it's pretty pretty simple what's going on here. Uh, and it's very, very clean. Uh, now, I am going to jump over to the... Uh, to the whoop! Oh my gosh. Uh, we're going to jump over to the bench. Perfect. Transitions. We love it. Uh, so, what I have here is... All of the templates more or less cut out. Uh, I've got a pile of smaller fiddly bits here that honestly might wind up being their own uh, video because I do intend to make them using foam, uh, but they're so small and so specific that yeah, I will probably lose them if I try to cut them out right now, including the eye, the lens, the little piece that goes around the lens, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, and then I've sorted the rest of them based on the thickness of foam that I, I intend to use. Um, and the more I think about this, the more I actually think I might put that one over here. Uh, and so what we're looking at here uh, is actually a redo of an older build of mine. Uh, so I do, I have made a Star-Lord mask in the past. I do think it's pretty good. Uh, a couple of small things about it. I think it's a little, uh, a little uh, wall-eyed here. So it's kind of pointing out either direction, which is not what we want. We actually want the eyes to sort of cup in sort of steampunk style and that's that's very important I think to the look of the mask uh, as well as there should be a little more shape uh, right in the middle here although there's a lot of good sculpting details in this one like this needs to be recessed and I'm really just going to completely redo these because although there's a lot of detail here this just overall is not quite right um, but we can take a look at this and see that we don't need to make uh, a lot of these pieces super thick um, honestly, uh, the only reason I'm thinking of making uh, this piece, which is essentially that right there, uh, out of a thicker piece of foam is just for structural integrity's sake. Um, but uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of varying thickness here, and I've got this sort of sorted out right here on the bench. Uh, and so we've got uh, our 8mm pieces. Over here I've got things that I will be making out of 6mm, some of which have have some two millimeter pieces that are going to be layered on top of them. You can see that sort of stuff in the striping that sort of makes up the back here. Um, so these will need to be cut out of six millimeter uh, and then daintily cut out uh, for for some two millimeter overlays. And that'll, that'll all be done uh, probably on another night. For tonight, I thought we could start with the thicker pieces of foam, not even the little two two millimeter fiddly pieces, but all the way over here with the eight millimeter pieces, which is not too many pieces, mind you. It's the keystone in the back of the helmet. Uh, we've got the two cheeks 
so the two lower sides of the front of the face. We have the very front of the grill of the mouth. Uh, we've got the earpiece and of course the piece that goes right underneath the grill of the mouth. And the reason I wanted to use uh, eight millimeter, a really thick, quite a thick foam for a helmet for these two pieces is because there's a lot of a ground in details that I do not want to cut through the other side of the foam, but I do want them to be nice and recessed. Uh, and B, they've got some undercuts, so he's gonna. We're gonna have to take some material out of the back anyways, and so that's just going to be a, a big problem if we then also cut through in a, in a thinner piece of foam. Uh, and then what we're gonna do uh, is we're also going to take a second here and talk shop about how to approximate. 3D shapes with 2D shapes. Uh, so I think what we might actually start with, so now that I've moved off the pieces that we're not going to start with here, I'm going to start with the earpiece, because the earpiece we are actually going to modify outside of the printer. Now, I'm going to jump back over to the PEP model, uh, because what we're looking at right now is this piece in particular. Whoops. This piece. Uh, and you'll note when I look at it from the side, there's a little bit of an edge to it. Now I do have a piece right here that I could simply ring around the edge of this earpiece, but I don't want to do that. I'd actually much rather it be one piece that I don't have to, to fiddle with once I'm done cutting out. I'd actually rather just sort of sand a soft bevel into that. And to that end, what we're going to do is we're going to take just this earpiece, the 2D earpiece, and we're going to add just a little bit, probably like like a, like a an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch uh, around that and just draft that on there uh, because that's not something we could pull off with Pepicura without significantly altering the model, and I don't think we need to. It's also just worth noting that especially when you're working in foam, Pepicura will get you really far, but it doesn't have to get you 100% of the way there. There's a lot of good ways to work around uh, small issues when working with a, a program like Pepicura. Let's jump back over to the bench. Awesome. Uh, so to do this, all we're going to do is I'm just going to take an extra scrap piece of paper here, uh, and I'm just going to tape this down. Grab this masking tape, squeak my chair a little bit. I'm just going to tape this down. Uh, I love using masking tape for this kind of stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people use scotch tape. It's such a silly little thing, but I like using masking tape because, A, it's still see-through, uh, and B, it is also... Uh, much easier to write on while still being semi uh, impervious to like inks so like stuff will still settle on it but you can still clean them back up again and it's it's pretty easy um, in the same way that you can sort of wipe sharpie marks off of duct tape you can sort of wipe sharpie marks off of masking tape but again you can see through it it's a little easier to write on I think uh, even with like pen or pencil uh, and so what we're going to go through here and do is just take, let's see, I'm going to grab, I have an architectural scale here, uh, which is super nice because it has a side, it's very broken, but it has a side uh, that is like nothing but eighth inches, eighth inch markings. Uh, so I'm going to grab, I had a pencil. There, I've got a pen right here, let's see. Perfect. Uh, and we're just going to ever so gently around the edge of this entire piece add about an eighth of an inch. Well, not, excuse me, not around the entire piece. We are actually only going to do it around uh, the upper edge of the piece because the rest of it doesn't have this bevel. It's actually just, just right around here. Um, and I don't need to make too many markings to do this. I just need enough to give myself a solid guide, especially since there's some some pretty straight lines coming around here. Perfect. Awesome. There we go. Riveting stuff, this. I know. Uh, but it's small details like this that will give our final build uh, some really nice depth uh, it can be very easy in foam to just layer the foam and let that be the depth you're working with. Uh, but adding subtle bevel, excuse me, subtle bevels um, 
subtle changes in sort of the 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 topography of your piece will definitely make your builds go from here uh, all the way to there. Here we go. Just like that, we're almost done with this very minor step. But again, it will for certain add a great deal. Uh, plus, hypothetically, I, I could really botch the fit of the piece that would otherwise go around this edge. And then you got to fill the edge because there'll be like an underside because you're essentially building sort of a hollow shape there. Um, and this way, I don't have to do that. I, I just have one piece that I will layer on but has a great deal more depth to it. Um, and so to that end, it's very nice. All right gonna just smooth that out awesome and we'll just we'll go ahead and cut this out real quick uh, and now this new template piece I might take a photo of this I might take a photo of this and uh, with the final PDF just release this this piece as is uh, for anybody who wants to build this exactly the same way that I did uh, without necessarily having to go through uh, and draw this this one kind of funky line. You really got to hand it to the designers of this particular mask, though, for having so many pieces that don't really mean anything, that aren't really something you can label, uh, and then so decidedly creating a piece that is just an ear, so very clearly an ear. Ugh. Massive respect. Let's see here. I'm just gonna run right around this edge. Nothing to it. Uh, another cool feature of this particular piece that we will be adding in a little later on. We'll cut this this excess here right off. There we go. Uh, a little later on is on the edge of this piece, there are also some uh, some recessed holes that we will uh, sort of puncture into the piece. And that's going to be really fun. All right, so now that we've edited... Crumple, crumple, crumple. Now that we've edited that piece, I have some scrap pieces of 8mm here. Um, these are pretty dense, which is great for this because this is not a prop that we want to stretch and change very much. Most of these pieces are basically going to be ground in and just glued directly into place. Um, and I'm going to see how much of this I can just fit onto these scrap pieces, because we're always looking to try and take care of our scrap. Um, there we go. Let's see. I can probably, can probably fit that like in there. Uh, when working on black foam, I tend to use a silver Sharpie to make sure that my lines show up nice and clearly. Uh, you can also use like a, a white chalk pen, uh, but I've always had a lot of luck with silver Sharpie, so I stick around. Uh, I have brand loyalty, but only to Sharpie. It's the one thing. I don't know, has anybody else honestly ever encountered uh, a cheap alternative to Sharpie that is not somehow the worst thing they've ever handled in their life. I feel like they have it. I feel like you can only go way up from Sharpie or way down. It is the perfect middle ground, though. There's, there's not, there's not like the poor man's Sharpie out sitting out there somewhere. I feel. Okay, so we got the one ear. Um, we'll mark that. We got the one, and I could probably just trace out the other one. And I'm leaving myself a little space here because these edges are pretty curved. So I don't want to get super far into this uh, and realize that there's no way I'm going to be able to get that edge out with my blade without accidentally cutting into uh, another piece that I've traced out. That would just be that would just be the worst. Let's see, can I fit? Oh, it's just a little too big. Just a little too big. Unless, does it fit this way? Ho ho ho, ho ho ho. No, 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 it's still hanging off the edge. Nope, that's okay. Uh, we try to be judicious with the scrap, but we also don't, we don't want to 
uh, hurt our overall product by uh, making silly mistakes. There's recycling, there's reusing, uh, and then there's just being silly because we'll end up having to cut it out again anyways, and that's just wasteful. There we go. So we got several pieces onto that one piece of scrap there. That's nice. Um, let's see, I've got a couple more here before I have to bust into the, uh, the full roll. I think this actually will fit just, just barely, and that's, that's good enough for me. Let's see here. Now, I'm a little nervous, I'll admit this freely, uh, about the grill of Star-Lord's mask. Uh, in the same way that I was a little nervous about working on Darth Vader's mask, uh, because there's a ton of detail, and the easiest way to get that on transferred to this is also to really just, like, cut apart your pattern to get all those lines and then transfer all those lines directly. Um, and if I mess up, I feel like I'm going to be starting very far back on this piece, uh, so I really hope I don't mess up. Let's see. That's gonna be that's gonna be too small for that. That's gonna be too small for this. Actually, I think that might be might be all I can get out of my scrap because that's too big, and that's too big. That's okay. Let's. I'm gonna grab another piece of this. I'm just gonna snip up a, a longer piece off of. Oh, hey, I've got another piece of scrap. Well, shucks. Let's, let's see here. Is there anything that can is there anything that can fit onto here? Sorry, I've got a dog, so sometimes sometimes my scrap can accumulate doggy hair. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this will work. I can get the well I should get this piece, not that piece out of this piece. That sentence made sense. Lacking context. Fantastic. Uh, I can get this cheek piece out of this scrap piece of EVA. By the way, if anybody is uh, at all curious about picking up any of the things that I use, uh, I do have affiliate links down below. Uh, it's an easy way for you to support the shop if you like these builds, if you like these live streams. It's a really easy way uh, for me to get just a little back uh, and be able to afford, you know, more more <laughs> silver sharpies. I go through so many. That's not true, but I do need them. There we go. Go. That's sweet. That's just another piece I don't have to uh, uh, carve out of the larger roll. All right. Let's. The good news is my roll has kind of a, a weird tail on it right now, uh, and it is just about big enough for these last two pieces. So, ah, let's trace them out. Let's see, what did I just do? I traced this one, so now I need to trace this one, which is perfect. Uh, one thing to note when you're working with foam that you've already worked with, sometimes you'll overcut and you want to just be mindful of that uh, because you don't want to accidentally uh, trace a piece across a line that you've already cut. And so you either have to try and perform a, a fairly hasty repair uh, or you're going to wind up with... Uh, again, just retracing everything you've done, and that's that's just a huge pain, especially on a larger build like this, where we're having to keep track. You know, I, I, I'll say this. It's not a larger build, but it is a more complex build. There's a lot more pieces, a lot more layering than I would have on, say, pretty much any other build. Uh, so, to that end, i got to trace out just one more piece in this thicker foam um, and then I think we'll go through and we'll go through the process of 
detailing one or two of these and really just see uh, how you kind of have to go piece by piece to make sure that you get all the detail you want out of your final build. Sweet. There we go. Uh, first and foremost, uh, obviously we can cut these out. Um, the good news here is that there's not a lot of uh, super angled pieces, so we're not going to be terribly mindful of a lot of uh, harsh angled cuts, but I'm going to pop over I'm going to pop over to the Pepecure because what we're seeing here is this cheek piece will actually meet uh, more or less the grill of the mouth at a slight angle. So we're going to want to angle, I think, pretty much just this corner edge here on both sides. Uh, but in terms of the other pieces we have here, we're not beveling this. We'll bevel that like... Uh, with with our Dremel in a little bit. Uh, we're not beveling that for certain. Um, and then this, well, since we are beveling th these guys, and I don't want to lose any material off of the grill piece, we will not bevel the grill, uh, nor will we bevel uh, this sort of under the chin piece, or excuse me, over the chin piece. Awesome. Let's pop back over. I love having these models on hand. You know, a lot of people do ask me why I why I have PEP templates instead of just uh, like PDF templates for a lot of these things, especially given that you can't open Pepecura on a Mac. Which, first and foremost, I do not use Mac for a lot of reasons. One of which is that it doesn't have Pepecura. The uh, second of all. I just think that it's nice to have this super solid reference near me at all times. Uh, and to that end, I, I like I like Pepecura. Uh, now, uh, what I've gone ahead and done is sharpen my blade, and I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to cut this out. Uh, one thing that happens a lot with foam cutting, especially when you're cutting tight curves through thicker material, is the material is attempting to deform as you are pulling the blade across. So first and foremost, Sharp blade is the best blade. Second, what you're going to experience is if you try to cut all the way through, you're going to end up with a, a, a line that, well, it's, it starts at the same place at the top and the bottom. Uh, there's a deformation in the middle, and I'll show you what I mean here in just sort of an off cut. I'm going to cut kind of a very, very, very harsh set of angles here. And a couple of things happens, uh, but the biggest of which is you can kind of see... Oh, sorry, you can kind of see this sort of angle to it that is also very swooped in, and that is just because foam be the way it be, uh, <laughs> which is regrettable. It's regrettable that, that that can happen. I can't quite get it to focus. There we go. It kind of looks like a shelf to it. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take several passes, especially at the more curved pieces here, uh, and that way we won't lose any material. <coughs> Oops. We won't lose any material while we cut this this very, very nice piece out. Oh no. Oh no, I was so busy telling you guys all about how you don't want to mess up and trace through the cut line. And then I did that anyways. Shoot, 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 shoot. That's okay, I will simply trace another one further down because I am a goof. There we go. I'll trace it on the other side too so we don't have a line running through another line. There we go. It's basically just a rectangle, so pretty easy fix there. Still, better I caught it now than later. Later is always going to be a little harder to fix. As you know, you move on, you start other steps, and it, sorry, silver's drying out here. There we go. Perfect. Now, for real this time, I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to do it in a couple of passes. So, the straight lines we can more or less cut in just like one to two passes. Again, not terribly complicated, uh, but we just want to make sure they're nice and clean. And then I can take the off cutaway and, and just show you that 
this is a super clean edge. This is as good as a factory edge, basically, which is part of the reason we like nice, sharp, clean blades. Uh, if you have trouble sharpening your blades, they're super cheap. You can get a lot of this, like little hobby blades like this very cheaply. There we go. And now, uh, especially with such a tight curve on this piece, we are going to take several passes at it and we're also going to sort of angle our blade up again we're still at a 90 degree with the table but we're going to actually pull the blade up a little bit so that we are very vertical with it so that we can do tighter adjustments on the cut and then uh, once we get back into a, a straighter way the straighter edge there we go uh, we can go ahead uh, and set it back down longer passes easier passes sweet and we'll do the same thing again only this time we're going to go just a little bit further into the material again trying to be very vertical with our blade think tall tall knife and then down again. And you can see it's already separating on the sides, but down here it's it's still pretty together, and that's that's okay. That's 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 actually what we want. There we go. Round again. Ooh, I didn't like that sound. Ah oh, shoot. Uh, so what happened there is our blade is dulling just a little bit at the very edge, uh, and it started to pull and actually tear just a little bit of the foam. It's not what we want. We want it to just run right around the edge. There it is. Uh, you can actually see that's where it tore right here. The good news is that is deep enough into the material that we would not see that on the final build pretty much at all. Uh, instead, we've got a nice clean cut all the way around, and we're not getting that shelf issue that we had with that, that practice piece. No, this is a nice, clean, straight edge, which is exactly what we want. All right, so we're going to set that aside for a moment, and now let's go ahead and we are going to cut out both cheeks here. Again, just being sure that we have sight of the, the edge that we are going to be beveling here. So let's cut, let's cut here. We're going to cut this at an angle. Again, straighter edges, it's easier to go through in one, maybe two passes. There we go. And we're going to bevel this as well. We're only going for like a 45 degree here. We're not going for something super complex or deep here. We just want something that's going to give us enough angle to abut these two pieces at a slight angle. Awesome. And then the rest of this should just be a bunch of straight lines, so... Let's do it. Sure, if I had the wings of a swallow, I would fly far over the sea, over the sea. Then a rocky old road I would follow. Uh, you can see here, rather than pull away this corner because it's still joined in the back just a little bit, I'm actually just going to uh, gingerly sort of rock my blade into my cut line and cut from the back and just join those cuts. Sweet. Uh, and that leaves that cut pretty, pretty clean rather than just tearing off the excess, which is important. Very important. There we go. That's a rounded edge. Here, right now, what I'm, what I'm running into is the. It's going to be like a series of straight edges with just like a teeny tiny cut in. Um, and so to that end, I'm actually just going to do the long cuts with my Exacto real quick. Uh, and then I will do. I will do those other cuts with my retractable blade, and I'll show you in a moment just why. Whew. 
Whew. Those are some some very, very tight curves I have left myself to cut out. Oh, it's gonna look so good when it's done though. This is gonna be such a nice Starlord build. And cheap too. That's the crazy thing about about foam. When you can when you can uh work from some some good templates with enough pre-planning, you can bust out a prop that looks like it should be four five hundred dollars for like 150 200 max you, you significantly cut down your costs as like a cosplayer because your time is worth nothing Ta -da! here we go so this one got away from me a little bit it is a little bit messy and i am sort of back cutting this a little bit um but the good news is this is not an edge that will uh, be visible to the world. <laughs> it will be, instead, it will be uh, underneath another edge. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our retractable box cutter here, and I'm actually just going to gingerly saw through this one little edge. Just a, just a draw cut there, and it comes right out. Do the same thing right here. That also lets me make sure that it's square with the actual piece of foam. You can see I kind of got this got away from me here. I might sand that, or maybe I can. Let's see, is this? I need to sharpen this. Let's see, can I just cut this away? Oh, I totally can. That's great. Perfect. There was a little bit of excess there where my cuts didn't quite line up. Sweet. One cheek. Two cheeks. Here we go. Let's do the other one here. Again, making sure to have those uh, angled cuts where the cheek meets the grill of the mouth. Awesome. Here we go. Let's do the same thing here. We're going to cut across this edge. Sweet. Do the same again. Sink the blade. Angle it down. We'll try not to let this set of curves uh, get away from us here. And that would be in ideal. Especially given that we just made that mistake. Kind of don't want to make it again. <laughs> Didn't like that sound. Kind of sounded like it was tearing again. Which is no good. Ah, evening, Melvin. Good evening. We are just cutting out some pieces and trying to show the techniques to do it just right. Sometimes what you can also do uh, for really tight curves is you kind of plant your knife and you sort of move the material past it very gently. And that's how you get some pretty some pretty sharp edges on those tight curves come on there we go awesome that yeah that one went a little better there's still a little bit of that that fuzziness at the bottom edge but again this isn't going to be super visible uh, so we'll just rock our blade through again oh didn't quite cut all the way through there no worries got it taken care of now Perfect. There we go. That edge here is square. Can do that with the with the long blade here. Oh, I didn't cut all the way through. I'm surprised. There we go. Move that off for a moment. Doop. And doop. Again, didn't quite get all the way through there. Oh, but it just fell right off. So that's good. So that's the other cheek. Um, and then let's see what we got here. We got the ears, the over the chin, and the grill of the mouth. Let's go ahead and we're gonna 
carve out the grill of the mouth here. This is all going to be just a series of square cuts. And actually, actually, I am going to leave a little bit. Oh, no, I'm not. That's not necessary. Never mind. I was going to say I'm going to leave a little bit of uh, excess material here to glue this on top of, but it's actually not that thick. Uh, it will be easier to join these like this. I just wanted thickness in this piece uh, so that I'd have some some extra meat to sort of grind through with my with my rotary tool. There we go. This is going to be another flat edge, but it's just curved enough that I want to take a couple of passes at it. And this is kind of like Darth the Grill of Darth Vader's mask in that it is symmetrical as well. And so if you mess up the symmetry of it, you know, we're going to start all over again because people are going to be able to tell if it's not symmetrical. That's that's just something you can sort of innately tell about a piece. Uh, and star I, I'd say Star-Lord's Mask uh, and this Pepikira model especially really uh, highlight that very intently because... It just, it, it challenges you as a viewer to see how technical and beautiful it is in that way. Um, and so if, if say, these three were, like, at a very different angle than these three sort of vents on the side, you'd just be able to sort of tell that. And uh, that makes it extra bonus important. Extra bonus important that we respect it, because otherwise we are just going to be... S O L. Let's see here. Got another pretty tight curve there. This is not a curve though. That is actually an angle. Harsh angle. Which we will be doing with this guy. So I'm going to do something a little a little less advisable for most of the time, but I don't want to overcut this because I, again, I can't lose any material on this. So I'm just going to do a series of draw cuts along this edge. So bum, 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 to cut all the material away because I don't want to lose anything else. I want to have all the material I'm meant to have in order to make the effect of the grill of the mouth just right. While we're chilling out, uh, I think now is a great time Ooh, that popped right out uh, to give a huge shout out to my patrons uh, Kieran and Austin of AJ Plays Piano thank you guys so much for supporting the channel uh, it's a really it's a really neat thing that you guys do for us uh, and we really appreciate it uh, you guys basically buy us buy us a nice little meal once a month and that makes it makes it all worth it man Makes it all worth it. Uh, plus, now I have uh, a great deal of uh, free templates that wind up over there that are not a part of my main YouTube series. Um, so if you're interested in all in that, in builds like uh, the Hound's Helmet from Game of Thrones, uh, you can check that out over on our Patreon. It's just three bucks a month, and you get a lot for it. We try to, we try to give you a lot for it, frankly. Uh, otherwise, if you're interested in owning any of this stuff, uh, I do have an Etsy store now, uh, which has been super fun, frankly, uh, because I, I get to sell not only the things I make for these videos, but I have uh, more templates over there, uh, as well as uh, builds from my past. Uh, that Star-Lord mask that I'm currently redoing is actually on sale right now, uh, just in time for Halloween. So, if you're at all interested in these builds, if you want one for yourself, go ahead and check us out over there. There we go. Nice and straight cuts here. Ugh. It's so funny, because I think that sometimes when you're in the middle of a build, it can start, especially because it's all foam, uh, it can start to feel like it's supposed to be a toy of some kind. Like it's it's for children, and this this just feels like a very fun shape that you handicap. It's it's fun fun to hold on to. There we go. All right, we are almost done 
cutting these pieces out here. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we can do in terms of detailing for them. Uh, obviously, we're taking our sweet time with this particular build, uh, partially because it's our current live stream series, but also because uh, this is such a unique build in its complexity and detail uh, that you you know we just we want to make sure that we get this right. Because if you're gonna do it, it might as well be correct. I don't wanna. I don't wanna just kind of wing this. I'd like it to look like we took the time, did the research, and we made sure that the shapes look correct. And it's it's a great approximation of the prop. I'm gonna do some draw cuts again. There we go. There's another way you can do subtle curves is uh, holding the blade straight and actually sawing down through and trying to get a nice even edge. There we go. So what's everybody else been working on? Or, or better yet, what's something you guys would like to see us do, especially after Star-Lord's done and uh, our current Captain Rex build? You know, what's next? We're looking at some, doing some half masks, some face masks, but what do you guys want to see? That's what I want to know. Oh, there we go. We've got the Mandalorian coming up soon because got some really cool... Uh, rumors about Ahsoka in that, so I'm really excited about that because we've got we got some things planned for that. Uh, the second we get a, a photo uh, of that, you know it's going to be right on the bench. It just is, and it's going to be great. There we go. Let's see. I can do this bevel sort of freehanded here. Perfect. And the second cut right here. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, and then there's this sort of a, a little groove in this here. And I'm wondering if maybe I should actually just carve that out with my rotary tool and just remove most of the material now. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. Anything that lets me uh, kick up less dust, any any cuts I can do for that, I'll, I'll always try to. Sweet. We'll call that cut out for now. Uh, and then the earpieces. And then we've got this all cut out. And we can probably start to detail them a little bit here. Let's see. These are those tight curves I was talking about before. Again, multiple passes. Being super gentle about this. That's a little off. Not by much. A little, a little off. Sometimes, sometimes you're still going to make mistakes. That's okay. The good news is this particular mistake appears to be slightly outside the line rather than slightly inside the line, which means we can just sand it back down. It's not ideal, but it's not bad. It'll be very easy to correct. These are, this is going to be a draw cut here. Perfect, right up to that edge. And this cut is going to... Oh, wait, no, there's another draw cut here. So we're just going to pull away from that real quick. There we go. And then just rock that back and forth until... There we go. I want to feel that just sort of wiggle free. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And now we can just race around this S-curve edge right here. Keeping a sharp blade. Sharp blade is a safe blade. Not to mention it cuts way, way better. There we go. 
sometimes you have to resort to sort of a sawing motion. Lots of control in that. Okay, where are we still needing to cut? Okay, it looks like around both curved edges it's still not quite through, so we're just going to gently separate that. The pretty vertical blade. That's great! So there's a little bit of marking from where it was cut, but we can still grind that down uh, very easily. Um, and there's enough thickness here that that's, that's going to be good. Sweet! Cut out the other one real quick. comes around here. And I got kind of close to the edge of the foam itself here. I'll we'll have to be careful around that. Because we can accidentally bust out and kind of mess up our single pass of a cut. Because that'll that'll be the kind of thing you have to grind away if you're not careful. There we go. Remove that. Oop. Not quite separated right there. There we go. Let's get rid of that there. Awesome. I'd like to thank everybody for, for joining me on this journey here. Uh, this is a really, a really fun build that I've done in the past, and I'm really excited to be doing it again and better, always improving. That's kind of the that's kind of the mantra, especially now that I'm doing lots of fun builds that I've always wanted to do. It's it's always keep improving, always keep trying to make the next one a little better than the last one. Let's see, just wiggle that free. Where isn't it separated? There we go. That was close. Oh, fun. There's a, there's a little air pocket in the foam right there. That happens sometimes. These are essentially extruded. Um, and so that means that there can be air bubbles in the process if uh, the manufacturer is not careful about this. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go through. We're just going to gingerly cut out that S-curve like we cut out on the last piece. That wasn't quite what we wanted. It was close. It wasn't quite right. Unfortunately, what happened there is the foam was sort of deforming, and rather than cutting, it just sort of pushed aside, and so there's a little bit of a wiggle to the cut. I'll show you what I mean in a moment here. There we go. Yeah, that's going to need to be ground down a little. So there's just sort of an edge to it there, and of course there's that little bit of shelf because that's not quite what we wanted to do. That's okay. Let's go through. Let's let's detail uh, one of the ears here. Let's let's detail this ear. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have the bevel that we're going to be grinding in, and of course this is the one that also needs to be ground down a little before that bevel comes in. Um, but what we can do is we can take a quick photo of this so that we do not forget that I want to add these, this piece for anybody who wants it. We're just going to go boop. Awesome. Now I've got that photo forever. Uh, we're going to cut off the outer edge of this. the edge that we added so that we could bevel it down. And what that means is that anything outside of what I trace here is what needs to be beveled down. So take our Sharpie again and just trace right around it. I'm not gonna bother with the other one right now because uh, we're running a little low on time and I'd like to, I'd like to kind of show you guys at least one, one of these finished up. Um, and then the other thing is we've also got sort of an, uh, a detail line running all the way around this. I'm just going to cut right down the middle of that with my scissors. Because we want to get every single ounce of detail that we can 
out of this build. There we go. That's excess sweet. Let's see here. That'll just line up right like that. Awesome. And we'll get that again. Now, it's important to note that I'm being a little sloppy with my tracing. Um, and that's partially because uh, I want it to be really clear which side of this line is the clean cut one. Because uh, it's going to be that very, very smooth line in there. Uh, so first and foremost, I actually think, especially since I'm beveling it, I can just cut off this little extra that I accidentally left on. So we're just going to take our very, very sharp blade and make that adjustment. And it's almost perfectly smooth, which is great because we are just going to grind this down now. Pull out a rotary tool. And I'm going to pull out a stone bit for this because uh, there's not very much material to remove. And I also don't want to have a bunch of fuzzy foam texture left behind. So we're going to I'll take uh, this smaller one. I'll take a scrap piece of foam. And one of the things I love about stone bits is that they also sort of seal the foam uh, as you go. And to that end, I'm just going to heat it up a little bit by grinding it against this scrap piece. Awesome. And that's also that's already getting kind of toasty, which is exactly what we want. We'll just run around this and give it a nice bevel. Now I'm going to make a quick note here, which is that we want this bevel to be uh, just a nice flat angle uh, from the top to the bottom. And I've started that right here by slowly working it down to that. Uh, but you can see where I've just started to move further along. It's not that way. I'm only getting about halfway through. Uh, and that's okay because I want to remove it, you know, bit by bit by bit. But it's, it's just worth noting that you want to watch out for that because it's very easy to accidentally just do this when what we really want is a nice smooth edge from top to bottom. Here we go. Think about Fallout combat armor. Uh, I don't have as much experience with Fallout, actually. <clears throat> My little brother is a huge fan of Fallout. Um, so I bet you that'd be something really fun, really fun to work out, some Fallout combat armor. Um, is combat armor like a specific item in the game, Nick Feltz? Uh, because I'd be super interested to see uh, what specifically you're talking about. Because it's kind of like Skyrim, where sometimes you'll be like, like, I want heavy armor, and you're like, ah, well, there's a lot of heavy armor. <laughs> All right.
There we go. Uh, okay, so there's 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 light, medium, and heavy. You know, I, I I should take a look. I should see what there is. I I definitely really like Fallout's aesthetic, uh, and I know that it lends itself really well to foam. Uh, so I should definitely take a take a look at that. Th thanks, Nick Felt. All right, I'm just gonna clean up this inner edge real quick. Oh yeah, that's looking very nice. Uh, before we wrap up, I'm actually going to uh, check check something real quick. Um, yeah, it does go all the way down. Sweet. I am just going to add one more detail before we call it for the night, uh, which is going to be the scored line around here. Um, I could probably route this out with like uh, my Dremel, but instead of that, I am going to... Uh, just do an etched line. Uh, Melvin, you you for sure better throw that that song request for next week in the chat. I'll I'll take it into to great consideration. Uh, but we're actually going to cut pretty deeply uh, into the foam here. But we are not going to go all the way through. We're just going to do one pass, not all the way through the foam. And then we're going to take our heat gun. It will heat this piece up. Uh, and then it will open up that line. And I'm going to show you two, uh, one thing real quick, too, uh, which is that this line is actually continued down the side. Um, so we don't want to leave that just as like a half cut. At the very bottom of it, we actually do want to just sort of cut just a little bit into the foam all the way through there. And the same is true right here. I want to cut just a bit into it sweet but of course this is still very much one piece of foam and all i'm going to do is take my heat gun on low and just pass it around it just wave it around that this will also help seal up the foam here makes it nice and pretty for when we want to glue everything together there we go Wow, that looks really good. All right, well, oh, there we go. Open that up a little bit more. Regrettably, we didn't make it as far tonight as I was kind of hoping we might, but we have one earpiece pretty well detailed out with a nice grooved edge all the way around it there and a perfectly smooth bevel right around it as well. Uh, and this will just smack right onto the side of it. Um, and it's got so much depth to it already and it's just one piece. I cannot wait to continue uh, to keep working on this build. For now, uh, I've been Jaden. I want to thank you all so much for coming and hanging out with me while I build. Uh, we'll be back at it again next week with more Star-Lord. In the meantime, check out new builds every week, new templates, check out my Etsy store, and thank you so much for joining us. Have a good one.